Okay, real quick, um, before we finish up the last video for this week, I want to draw your attention to the Moodle site. Um, the videos are up here, and then I just posted your writing assignment for this week, and here is the space. I can see it. You cannot see it yet. Um, where your quiz is going to be and the quiz will be up before the end of today, which is Wednesday So be on the lookout for that. All right, and this video And the other two videos I posted today will help you with all of those assignments So do make sure that in, in addition to watching the guild season 5 before you watch the videos and also to um, downloading the handout which is linked to the syllabus as well as it's right here if you um, would like, if that's easier for you. Make sure you read through the sound portion of that handout before you take the quiz and before you take the assignment. And also before you watch the rest of this video or any of the videos, um, you should always do the assignment first so that when you're going through the video, it's not new information, it's just reinforcing what you know. That will really help you to ace um, the homework and the quizzes. A lot of you keep asking me, what can I do to improve my grade? Well, really, I mean, the important thing is that you put in the work. And because this is an online class, I don't get to stare you in the face and say, did you read it? You know, you have to um, hold yourself accountable for that. So make sure you do read um, the assignments, the handout, watch the videos before you watch my videos. If you do all those steps, you should be acing the quizzes and the homework assignment, really. Okay, so that's my advice. I've given it several times. I'm going to keep giving it. Um, all right, so now we're going to switch back to showing you examples from season five of sound. Now, the clip I'm going to show you here in just a second is um, a clip that features music in it. And the interesting thing about this music is that it's actually diegetic music, even though it gives a lot of appearances of being non diegetic. The music is actually coming from the game that the characters are playing. Um, and so even though it seems like it's, there's a potential that this is a soundtrack and soundtracks, of course, the characters can't hear, even though we, the audience can hear it. If the characters can't hear it, that makes it non diegetic. This is not, this music is not a soundtrack It's coming from the game. So it is diegetic. Not only can we hear it, the audience, but the characters can hear it as well. That means that it's inside their world. Therefore it is diegetic music. Okay, here we go. Tape I've never heard. Remind me to lend you Atlas Shrug. Codex, Eels! What if they shut down the game? Guys, we just wiped it. You don't even care. Dabu! All right, all right. Master Chiefs, we'll reconvene in 2100 hours. What's the deal with your helmet friends? Did they bring snacks? Ah, my Seat Sabers organization has gotten so big that I've so again, that music was diegetic, even though it seemed in many levels to be non-diegetic. It was diegetic. And also there was a lot of examples in that clip of post-synchronous um, dubbing, post-synchronization dubbing, where sound effects were added later that matched what was happening temporally on the screen. So we had the sound, for example, of the door shutting. It was very clear, clean sound of the door shutting. Um, in real life, if they picked up that sound, it would have made um, a muddled soundtrack if they were picking up sound like that. So, just want to make sure you're paying attention to that every time we see it, okay? Okay, so the next clip I'm going to show you is of the steampunk characters at the game, or I'm sorry, the Mega Game Orama Con. And um, steampunk is something that's really interesting because it's become popular in the last, I don't know, like 10 years. And it's really a part of both um, an appreciation of older technology, technology specifically from the Victorian era, which um, was part of the latter part of the 19th century from 1837 through 1901. Um, and so, and there was technology back then. We tend to think of technology these days as the internet and the digital and nothing but the internet and the digital. But as McLuhan taught us, and as we've been referencing back over the course of the semester, technology is any extension of ourself. And so in the 21st century, there's been this real nostalgia for the Victorian era and for Victorian technology. And so this um, movement called steampunk comes up and it's very hip, very hipster, very uh, self-reflective um, scene. And these steampunk characters um, 
are sort of seen as mean girls, I guess you could say, within the mega game of Rama Khan um, culture. But what I want to show you th this for is an example of non diegetic sound. There is a soundtrack of old timey music set to the footage. Um, and the footage also itself is, is given effects so that it looks older. There's a little bit of um, like scratches that are, are added digitally uh, to make it look like celluloid film. And also they change it from full color to a sepia tint. So, but what we're paying attention to here is the non-diegetic sound. And they, they draw attention to the fact that the sound is non-diegetic in this clip. So the characters cannot hear it, but we are given that soundtrack in order to help set the mood for the scene. So the sound here, the non-diegetic sound, underscores how when Clara shows up, she ruins the moment for these steampunk characters to sort of envision themselves back in the 19th century, enjoying their tiny little cups of tea um, and their sort of absurd, um, over-the-top over realization of, of Victorian technology. And so that sound really draws attention to that. Okay, here is my last example of non-diegetic sound. Um, and it's actually a company, it's really quick, but it's also accompanied by images that underscore the fact that what we're seeing here is non-diegetic, um, but is a an attempt at visualizing Vork's thoughts at this moment when Blades is talking about uh, how is he gonna make money to pay for the for the room and Vork has an idea and it's it's illustrated through some special effects um, and sound. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it was very quick, but we have that um, operatic classical music swelling in the background that sort of gives it this god-like moment, right? And as well as the sound of a cash register um, and an explosion. So in other words, very quickly they've explained to us through the use of sound effects that um, that not only has Vork had an idea, but he's had a great idea and it's about money and and it's blowing his mind, okay? So he's really excited at this moment and the sound helps to communicate that. Okay, so this is the last example I'm gonna show you guys before I get into sort of chatting a little bit about your homework assignment. Um, but here we have a shot reverse shot situation between Blades and the conference attendees in the audience. And it's really kind of funny. Um, I love this, this season of the series because there's just so much going on. Uh, the narrative is really engrossing, I could say. <laughs> um, anyway, so there's a shot reverse shot going back and forth between Blades and the audience. And you'll see a lot of examples of off screen sound here. And that's to help create continuity. Um, within the the com knowing that there's a conversation going on back and forth between blades and the audience even when you can't see the person speaking so it helps to kind of act almost like a sound bridge uh, between shots but it's not actually a sound bridge so don't get it confused with the sound bridge which i showed you an example of in the previous video okay so here we go watch for the sound how it keeps going on even though visually what we're seeing doesn't match what we're hearing but it helps to create the um, impression that the conversation is continuing and that everybody's participating in it simultaneously. Hi, Rachel. Go on, volunteer. Uh, I really owe you an apology. Um, I've done you wrong, girl. And I'm here to say that I'm sorry. What about me? Do you remember me? Yeah, and um, what was your name again? Okay, so you should have seen that this diegetic sound um, also is an example of non, I'm sorry, off-screen sound. And then also we have some post-synchronous 
synchronization dubbing, the sound of um, Blades catching the laptop that is hurled at him. And of course, we wouldn't have picked that up with a microphone, so that had to be an added later to add verisimilitude to the scene. Okay, so I'm going to be choosing a scene, a 30 second scene from um, from the Guild Season 5 and posting that clip up on Moodle. And I'm going to do that right now so that you have it as soon as possible. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to watch that 30 second clip and you're going to do exactly what I did. Um, throughout this video and you're just going to type up a couple of paragraphs one or two paragraphs outlining the um, sound terminology that you can identify within that clip and explaining or analyzing the significance of those sound um, those sound maneuvers that sound terminology in the audience's perception of the guild okay so that it helps to create either a sense of verisimilitude or maybe the non-diegetic soundtrack is adding um, an emotional layer to the the narrative, uh, etc. So um, we went over quality, direct sound, sound bridge, diegetic, non-diegetic, um, off-screen, post-synchronization dubbing, sound perspective, and synchronous sound. You'll notice that we did not go over non-simultaneous sound. Um, nor do we go over sonic flashback. Those are just seen so very, very rarely. Um, I wanted to put those definitions on the sheet for you in case you do happen to see them, uh, but they really are so rare that it's unusual to see them. But if you do see them in the future, you'll be like, oh, that's non-simultaneous sound or that's a sonic flashback. Okay, so um, good luck and... If you have any questions, don't forget to post them to the forum um, or stop by my office hours or call me during my office hours. Talk to you soon.